So, so on that note, um, we're here for growth and there's no better person to teach us how to do that than Trey. So Trey, welcome. And we go till the bottom of the hour. So just let it rip, okay? All right, well, sounds good. Well, thanks for having me on. Uh, you guys are doing a phenomenal job. I am a, a huge fan of, of Neil and MJ. And I just think, um, I just think the world of you guys, you know, saying that you're 8,000 away from where I was at a certain point. And um, I, I think you're gonna do far, exceedingly far above what I've been able to do. Um, at any given point. I, I believe once you get to the place I am in time in your business that you'll actually have more volume than what I have right now, just because you guys are, are doing all the right stuff. And your number one writer is almost 50,000 for the month. That's, that's, uh, that's phenomenal. You guys, you guys are doing awesome. So congratulations on that. What I want to do is just spend the next few minutes and, and share with you guys and part with you guys some things that looking back, um, have really made all the difference in our business. So like what Neil was saying, I mean, we've, we've had a heck of a run. I feel like we haven't really even gotten started yet. I think we've, some people say you haven't scratched the surface. I say we haven't even scratched the scratch. I do believe that um, we're in the best place at the best time with the right company going forward. And if you look at the insurance industry as a whole, like there's never really been an opportunity like this. And I'm, the thing I love most about your guys' call is you do it at night, at the end of dial day, everybody's got their appointments booked for tomorrow and the next day, and you guys are all ready to run. And I, I just think that's an awesome way to do it. So what I want to do is just impart some things on you guys, especially the new people. That's who I really want to talk to, people that are just now getting started, who are nervous, who haven't really made a lot of phone calls, who haven't really made a lot of sales who maybe have made a few sales and are questioning whether or not this is actually for you. Um, if you look back over the course of, since I got started in the company, that's really all I've ever tailored any of my conversation toward is the people that, you know, come Thursday night at the end of dial day that are getting ready to basically quit. Because <laughs> um, that was me for a long time. If you guys don't know my story, I, I started in 2014, uh, I sold, uh, right out of the gate. That's all I did was sell. My first quarter, I did uh, 50, 50,000, I think the first quarter, something like that. I made, I made, well, I issued more than that, but I made about $47,000 my first quarter in the business, just, just selling policies. And then the next year, my mom had had cancer and the cancer came back. And so that year I didn't do a whole lot. And that's really what endeared me to Family First Life was the fact that even though that next year I didn't do a whole lot, Andrew Taylor and Paul McLean, they didn't treat me any differently. They treated me the same. And the most valuable lesson that I learned from Andrew Taylor was the best thing he could do for me is not need me. Like he was never calling me up trying to figure out where his overrides were. It didn't matter if I sold or not. He was going to write $500,000 a year by himself, whether I wanted to do it or not. And so it made him very level-headed and very approachable and just very normal. And to be honest with you, at the time that I met Andrew way back then, he was already really financially independent. Um, he had a bunch of rental properties. He was doing well in real estate. He had a bunch of stuff going on and he sold a lot of insurance and uh, he was able to pay his bills. And I thought he just had a great lifestyle. I was really, I thought he reached the pinnacle of his career at that point, you know? And um, so when I got started, there was a few things that I had to make a decision on right away. Um, 2015, my mom's cancer came back. Andrew treated me the same. She ended up passing away that year. And uh, he gave me a job in his office to do his recruiting. And I worked with him in his office as his employee for about a year. And every misconception, a little over a year, every misconception I had in the business uh, was alleviated during that time period. Because what I realized was that people um, that try to blame you know, the leads or they try to blame the whatever it may be that it's, it's, it's never that this doesn't work. It's that people don't work. Like I remember um, I'd been struggling in the field and then Andrew came in one day and he's like, Hey, I don't have enough appointments for Wednesday. I need you to call my leads and help me book up my schedule because I have to hit my, my goal because what he would do is he would get ahead on the weekends so he would go out Saturday and Sunday, and if he didn't reach 10K on those two days, then he would run Tuesday and Wednesday as well. 
And so he hadn't hit his goal. He was having a real dry spell in the field and he gave me his lead binder and I started calling through those leads. And in my, the way I'd always looked at it was Andrew had all the good leads. That's the way I thought of it. Like Andrew has all the good leads. He has those good ones. When I got a hold of that lead binder and I started calling through Andrew's leads, they were the worst possible leads a human could ever call. And I thought he was messing with me. I'm like, dude, these are way worse than the ones I get that I don't sell. <laughs> like, these are awesome. You know, these are, these are awful. And uh, I thought he was messing with me. Like, he was just giving me all the bad ones, you know. And what I, what I came to find out was he was just really, really consistent. And he did whatever he had to do each and every week to hit that sales goal. And so when I say that, a lot of people don't have a sales goal. Like I said, he, he would go out. If on Saturday and Sunday he didn't reach 10K, then he'd do whatever he had to do to reach 10K by running the other days before we had to turn in numbers on Wednesday night. And he did that each and every week. I remember one time, uh, you know, I was an employee and I was super excited because the boss was going to take me to dinner. And I think the entire time I was ever Andrew's employee, I might have eaten lunch with him one time because we had a really good employer-employee relationship. <laughs> so we, we didn't hang out. And uh, I remember I won this contest or something and he was going to take me to dinner and he had this reservation at this fancy place, you know, on like a, like a, a Thursday night or a Friday night. And uh, we pulled up, we're about 30 minutes early and I go to jump out of the car and Nicole, who's now his wife goes, Hey, what are you doing? We, we're, we're dialing. And Andrew sat in that car 30 minutes before our dinner reservation and booked four appointments. And I was like, it's so habitual for him to do that. Like, in the beginning, the thing that's uncomfortable for you to do, the trick is to make it uncomfortable for you not to do it. And Andrew had gotten to that place where if he didn't have his 27 appointments a week, if he didn't have that set in stone, he was really out of place and uncomfortable. And so that's the thing that I would, I would encourage everybody to get to that point. I think a lot of times we are overestimating what we can accomplish in Family First Life in the first week or two but you're dramatically underestimating what you can accomplish in family first life if you do it for a year or two. Because once you do something long enough, anything you do more, more than once becomes easier and you don't have to think about it anymore. It's just like brushing your teeth. And that's what I saw Andrew do over time was he just, he did the consistent thing long enough that it was hard not to do it, just like any other habit. Like if you guys think about anything that you started bad at and you got really good at it over time, what did that take? It took repetition and it took time to where it didn't become something that you thought about every single time that you did it. So when you're brand new and you're dialing on Mondays and Thursdays and you're on the phone for two hours and you want to go take an early lunch, understand everybody's gone through that in the business. When you're calling through leads from the CRM and you keep getting hung up on and people are telling you no and you have three appointments and it's noon and you're thinking, how am I going to get my 15 appointments? What do I have to do? And you decide to stick in on the phone and the next hour is awful. Everybody's gone through that. But let me tell you what's on the other side of that. Eventually, the numbers always work out. And we believe in this thing. Andrew always taught me this concept of fourth quarter magic, that 80% of the results come in the last 20% of the time. And the key to this business is just do what the average agent is not willing to do. Like if you say to yourself, I don't want to do that. By doing it, you put yourself so far ahead of the average person and it becomes like a game. Like I remember this one time that, uh, that Andrew told me this story where Paul McLean was on the phone with him and Andrew had his headphones in and Andrew goes up to this he pulls up to this house. It's 930 at night. He's an hour late. Okay. The woman just pulled in her garage. So he knows she's home. All right. She would have no showed him had he showed up on time. She's a single lady. It's 930 at night. And Andrew goes, Hey, I don't want to go up there. And, um, and so Paul is in his headphones and he goes, dude, just go do it. The average agent won't, won't do it. Just go do it. So he shows up, he knocks on the door and she goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry I missed you. I'm a physician. I worked overtime. I, I got off late. I forgot to call. We can still do it now if you want. And Andrew's like, I can't believe this. Like he walks up to this dark house, you know, he started pulling the garage but the house is dark. The door's closed now. Goes up to the door. She lets him in. He ends up writing a $750,000 annuity in that house. 
And that was the one appointment that he was an hour and a half late for. He was afraid to go up to. And I can't tell you how many times that happens over and over and over and over and over. It's almost like there's a group of like insurance agents that died like a hundred years ago that are in heaven. And they're looking down thinking, how can we test Neil and MJ? You know, <laughs> like it's nine o'clock at night. Neil's an hour late for the appointment. He doesn't want to do it. Let's, let's throw him a bone. Let's see if he's willing to go the extra mile. And so we call that fourth quarter magic. I've seen that happen over and over and over and time and time again. But the mistake that people make is they don't give themselves enough time for it to work. Like people get into this business in crisis mode where it's like, if it doesn't work out, they're going to be in it. And what I always tell people, look, like you had financial problems before, like the last five, like if you looked at my business, when I got started, you looked at the last five years of my life in 2014, it was full of financial wreckage. Like I didn't open my bills. I just threw them away. I just, I didn't even look at them. I just figured if something was bad enough that the light company would like put something on the door and I'd know to pay it. You know, if it was really bad, they'd call me from collections. I, I was in, I'd made so many bad financial decisions that when I got to Family First Life, I, I'd been beaten up to the point where I thought I, I can't go through that again. And I remember consciously making the decision, I'm not going to fix all my problems in one or two weeks, but what I can do is get myself in the right direction so the next five years can be way better than the last five years. And then what I did was I just consistently engaged in the activities that would move me closer to where I wanted to go, not back to where I was at. And I celebrated the small wins. So the thing that I encourage everybody to do is just make a decision early on that you will be here doing this a year from now. That resolve that no matter what happens, you'll be here doing it a year from now. No matter what problems come your way, no matter what challenges you have to face, no matter whether or not you get a charge back for a no-show or, or somebody, you hire somebody and they quit or you hire somebody and they never start, whatever those issues are, are you going to a bunch of chargebacks in a row or a bunch of people hang up on you or you have a bad dial day or, or something bad happens to you financially along the way where you felt like it wasn't, whatever it is, just make a decision that you'll be here a year from now because what happens is the hardest part of this business is the first year. And anybody that tells you that there's an easier way, that there's a better lead, that there's a better, all that, none of that's true. None of that's true. The first year in insurance takes an insidious amount of work. It's hard. It's not easy. Most people don't do it because they won't resolve to stick it out a year. But if you'll stick it out a year, what'll happen is a few things will happen. The first thing is you'll get beyond that you know, ninth month where 10, 11, and 12 start coming in. And those 10, 11, and 12 month payments, month 10, 11, and 12, that'll start covering your lead cost if you're consistently out there selling. And all of a sudden, you'll just have more money and you'll be more profitable. And that's where that'll come from. The other thing that'll happen is you'll naturally be really good at doing the business if you do it consistently for a year. Because clients don't have Zoom calls at, at nine o'clock, eight o'clock at night with all their friends talking about how to give the insurance guys better objections. They don't do that, but we have calls consistently every single week telling you how to better handle the objections and get better and hone your craft. What you'll see is over time, you'll tend to notice that there's really only a few scenarios you ever really run into. They're presented to you a little differently on the beginning, but in the end, it's always the same story and you'll just get good at overcoming those things before they come up. Like people say to me, Trey, what do you say in the house when somebody said they want to think about it? If you do it right and you do it long enough, you don't get a lot of I want to think about it. All the stuff that you wrestle with early on, time either exposes you or promotes you. And so if you just do it diligently and try to hone your craft and don't be so hard on yourself, that's the thing. Look, it, your greatest strength in this business is really your greatest weakness. The, the most beautiful thing about Family First Life is all the people having success. Sometimes the greatest weakness is all the people have a success because what it'll do is you'll look at those people and say, well, it's Johnny's doing it. He wrote $74,000 on an instant internet lead at midnight, you know, and I only wrote two apps this week and then you'll beat yourself up, up over it. That's the one thing I never did. I just, I had a good sense of humor and I had a bad memory. I laughed it off. I forgot about it and I wasn't so hard on myself. All I focused on 
was there was no good, there was no bad, there was only learning. And my goal was to get through 100 appointments as fast as possible. And my goal was I resolved to be here a year from now, no matter what. And the same thing goes with building your business. The reality is everybody runs into the same hardships and problems. I remember Matt Smith saying that on a call when I first got started. He said, listen, everybody runs into the same problems in the business. Some people get a certain problem early on. Some people get it later on. But your job is just to learn how to overcome those things. Yeah, in the beginning on the phone, no, you're not good. If you do it long enough, you get good. In the beginning, when you, when you go to see people, you get a lot of no-shows. Eventually you get good at not getting those. When you get, when you sell one and they charge back a lot in the beginning, I think everybody kind of goes through that, but eventually you have 85% persistency and people won't cancel no matter what you do. It's just, it's just a matter of time. And so you got to just focus on progress, not perfection. What did I do at the end of the day? If you can say to yourself, if everybody on my team or everybody on the team did what I did today, would it have been a good family first life day? And as long as you can say yes to that question, then you close the book and you start again tomorrow. And the thing that I would tell everyone to do that I think is most important is plug into all the trainings. This is really hard to do when you're isolated and by yourself and you can't give what you don't have. So you need to fill your tank consistently. That's what I would do. I would get on the calls and I would list to other people having success and rather let that Rather than let that demoralize me, the story I would tell myself is, if they can do it, I can do it. If they can improve, I can improve. If they can get better, I can get better. If they can get profitable, I can become profitable. I didn't sit around and just think that everybody was lying to me. Actually, there probably was a period of time where I thought everybody was lying to me. All the policies canceled. Nobody made any money. And I had an unfair advantage because... Um, when I did start working with Andrew Taylor, I had his commission statements. I was one of his admins, so I saw his back office. And I realized, man, this guy's lifestyle is way below, way below what it could be. And it was, it was refreshing because I'd never been around people that made that kind of money that were so normal and willing to help me. In, in, in my previous career anywhere else, it was always like, what can we get from Trey? How can we use Trey? And here, you know, I really did feel like people had their hand out trying to help me up. And, and that's the thing about Family First Life that I think has never changed. I mean, when I think about how much, you know, Neil and MJ care about the team and how much they're willing to help and just their attitude and, and how they reach out when they need help and it's how much they trust it and, and how hard they work, that will always work. The only shortcut in this business, everybody thinks that the that the trick to this business is getting the big deal. And the truth is, it's not getting the big deal. It's all the small deals put together that get you to the big deal. And so I think where people underestimate things, to give you an example, is we can never account for momentum and getting better. Like I remember John Wetmore did this training one time at a conference. And he said, because he's a real numbers guy, you know, he'll get out the spreadsheets and do all that jazz, right? And he was going through... And he was like, I realized at one point in time, I wasn't selling enough. And so I said to myself, my goal is I'm basically going to run 20 appointments a week. I'm going to do that 50 weeks out of the year. So that's a thousand appointments for the year. And if I close, um, how did he do it? He basically said that he would close $20,000 a month. And at the end of the year, he would issue 250000 because his average policy was $80 a month and all he had to do was close 25% of the people that he settled. And he believed that he could do that consistently. And he said, if I do that consistently and I don't worry about, you know, the, the, the scoreboard and what was happening in the moment, I just focused on that activity long-term that there was no way that that year would go by and I wouldn't earn 250,000 in commissions on my own pin. And then what happened was by August that year, he was already over 400,000 and everybody came to him and they said, John, what, how did you do that? Did you run 40 appointments a week? Like, what did you do? He goes, no, I just did the 20. He goes, but the thing that I can never account for and the thing that you and I can never account for is momentum and getting better. Now, the only way that happens is through consistent, persistent activity over time. The mistake that agents make is they go out, they make a few sales, 
they don't book as many appointments the next week or they go to Cancun or they spend all the money that they get and then they get a couple chargebacks and they end up on this emotional roller coaster going through these ups and downs because everybody's used to going from like crisis mode to like head above water, right? Crisis mode to surviving, crisis mode to surviving. And the trick to this business is just doing that consistent activity long enough that instead of going from crisis to surviving, you're going from surviving to thriving. And then you even take it above, you know, a notch above that. But that comes from consistently doing it over time and not being, not paying attention to what's in your bank account or, the, the trick is once you can get out of the mindset of what's in it for me and truly be able to sit down with people and truly just try to help them, try to help Mrs. Jones get a policy so that her kids don't have to have a car wash when she dies. Like really think about you're advocating for the beneficiary. That's who you speak for when you go see family. You're advocating for Tom and Susie when Mrs. Jones decides to say no. You're thinking about them. It's not just about Mrs. Jones. You're thinking about them and work from that standpoint. So anything that comes at you in the in-home is like, listen, Mary, I understand where you're coming from. It's never a good time to get a new bill, but I have to be honest with you. I'm speaking for Tom and Mary. They don't want you to, they don't want you to ever think that you have to worry about anything, but you better believe if something happens, they got to come out of pocket $15,000 out of your grandson's college fund they would have much rather you paid 62 dollars a month rather than have you do, have them do that do you see where i'm coming from mary i'm thinking about them like if you put yourself in that position all the time not thinking about yourself but truly putting families first and others first and not thinking about what you get from it but what you give in the act of doing it and you do that long term this is inevitable this has to work but I just, I implore everybody to stay off the emotional roller coaster of I'm here. I think I should be here. I'm not here by now. So I must be failing. The reality is you cannot grow from where you think you should be. You can actually only grow from where you really are, <laughs> right? That's the way it works. You can't grow from where you think you should be. You can only grow from where you actually are. So interrogate re reality on a regular basis. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. Try to get better day by day. Don't be so hard on yourself. Make a decision to do it for a year. And if you do that long enough, it's a probability. It is not a possibility. There is a likelihood, an expectation of success if you do that. It's like a recipe. So I hope that helped, uh, Neil. I, I, think I, I think I got it right to the 830. Um, You're actually four minutes early. So that's pretty amazing. <laughs> Hey, if you wouldn't mind, I just, uh, Juan, if there's something you want to ask Trey, um, just jump in. Um, we're, we usually do these meetings separate. We decided after we talked to you, this is like our team huddle. And so, um, you know, he's, he's down in Houston, has a great team growing all over the country. And um, so Juan, is there anything you want to ask Trey? I mean, not to put you on the spot, but. Oh, for sure, man. Yeah. Hey, thank you. No, no, no. I, I, I love Trey. He doesn't know me, but I, I know him uh, just like everybody else uh, that has listened to Trey. And then so uh, we're a fan of you, Trey. And then we, we learn a lot. Uh, we, I, I, I listen to all the stories and I, I learn a lot from your humble part and how you explain to your team. But uh, one thing that, that we heard is how you grew from, you know, two years ago that you were like at a, a one one eighty, and then went to like over two millions now per month. Was it Neil? Was it like two years or three years? Nineteen in two thousand eighteen, December eighteen, uh, December twenty eighteen. The, the I was measuring August, so yeah, so three so years. Three years, amazing. So we all we all are excited because we could be we could be in that position ourselves, and then so what? Well, one of the hardest things, Trey, and I'm pretty sure you know, is 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 going from from a hundred uh, in volume to three hundred, and yes. uh, it kind of I. 
I've seen a lot of people, they, they take a long time and I, I, it is very, very hard. How do you inspire others to do what you do, uh, which is okay. recruit, inspire other people and do the same? Well, the, the way, the way I, I get people to understand that is it's just the fundamentals. It's run, tackle, block, catch. Like if you would have talked to me in 2016, I'd have said the exact same thing I said for the last 26 minutes. I didn't change it a lot. I give people, I set up a game that people can win at. And then I don't, I don't jump from thing to thing and idea of the week and do this and do that. And this is flashy and we were doing it this way. Now let's do it this way. I just focus on consistent, persistent activity over time. And I knew if I focused on me doing that long enough that other people would see what I do and eventually they start doing it with me. And that's really the trick to the business. If you look at the growth of Family First Life USA, Andrew Taylor's team, what that really came from was a lot of people were focused on how many writing agents they had. And we were focused on how many people were hiring with us. And the way we got people to hire with us is we kept it really simple. We were like, you didn't have to go out and hire 17 recruiters to start, you know, and pay them a bunch of money you didn't have. Just make it a habit of taking a few people a day from not knowing about Family First Life to knowing about Family First Life. And the best thing you can do for your team is to not need them. The best thing you can do for Bob, who's getting started today, who is struggling, is go hire Mary, who goes out and kills it right away. Because that inspires Bob to keep going. Proving the model over and over and over with new people is what causes it to continue to, to grow and move away from you. And the mistake people make on the building side is they hire 10 people, they get a few people to write, they stop doing it, uh, you know, somebody gets sick, somebody decides they don't want to do it anymore, somebody, they just quit, you know, and, and uh, Mike goes through a divorce and, you know, whatever. And now you're back at square one, trying to build up momentum and hire new people again. So people go through this herky-jerky way of doing it. The way that we always the way that I always try to communicate with people is just do it consistently. You should be as uncomfortable not having 10 new agents to talk to on a regular basis as you are not having enough appointments on a Monday night. You, it, should, it should make you, you know, like at the end of a Monday and you have like six appointments, you should have had 16 because you didn't start dialing to like 6 p.m. Like, and you have that pit in, the, in your stomach, like, holy crap, I'm gonna go out and do these six. The first four probably won't show. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You should feel that same way when you don't have a bunch of new agents that you're talking to on a regular basis that are dialing for the first time, that are buying leads from the CRM, that are calling you and say, hey, is there any work spots coupons? Like, like all the same stuff that you deal to, with on a regular basis. Like I called all the leads. I only talked to two people. They said they had it taken care of. Now you dialed like 17 times. You didn't dial for three hours. You, you dialed for 26 minutes and you watched a lot of TV and you took a lot of notes, you know, like that's probably what happened. All the stuff that new agents deal with on a regular basis, you just have to immerse yourself in that all the time and just be as uncomfortable not having that in your life as you are not having enough appointments. And people say that sounds exhausting. That sounds like it's a lot of work. It is, but it's not compared to what, you know, <laughs> compared to if I had a roof of a house, I, I don't even think I could get on a roof of a house. Like compared to what? I, I just talk on my phone. And people say, it sounds like you just work all the time. Well, you got to work all the time doing something. Idle hands are the devil's workshop. I'd rather, the best thing you do for your self-esteem is work. Not sit around and think about what you should be doing, but just move forward, take action. And if you can just instill that in the group and whenever you get stuck, rather than think about what's the next step, just take a step. Don't overthink it. Just move forward. Move fast, break things. So hopefully that helps. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Listen, Trey, we, we sure appreciate you. It's 8.32. You probably got some people in the restaurant you need to go join. So just thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate you. If we can do anything for you, we're just... We're all just little itty bitty people, but we, we want to have big businesses. So we're willing to work. And I think what you just gave us was gold. Well, you're giants in my book. So oh, thank you. I, I, I wish we had more, more of you guys. That's for sure. You guys were great. And I tell you what, the trick is just stick with, with Neil and MJ. Like 
I promise you consistency over time with this group, with the right intention. Sean might tell me one thing. He said, everybody that has success, successful business has three things in common. The first one is they work really hard. The second thing is they invest in their business. And the third thing is they're really selfless. The people with the biggest agencies work really hard. They invest the most in their business and they think about others before they think about themselves. And you guys have all those things in spades. So for you, it really is just a matter of time. I believe that. Well, and we got a whole team of people that think like that too. So that's very encouraging. Amen. All right, guys. Well, listen, we appreciate Trey. Let's go out and just let's crush it this weekend. Um, and um, we'll see you next Thursday. Thank you, Trey. Appreciate you. All right. You guys have a good one. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye.